Hello to you people of YouTube, and welcome back to some more Baltimore. As you can see, this general area is what we worked on in the last session, and today we are going to build over here, I think. But before we go to that, we're going to take a look at, um, to make sure that we have everything covered, which I don't think we do. Alright, yeah. Certainly don't. And I also missed this little area in my development. Let's see. I think the small one will have to be big enough. Eh. Nah. With a large. We will uh, slap that right here. Slap another one over here. About there. Making sure everybody is protected equally under the law. Well, that's not really what it means, but so okay. Let's see. Fire, fire hazard. I hate these red circles. I'm just going to sort of indiscriminately plop them in the middle of things, not caring too much what they take over, because we are jerks. Okay, <clears throat> education's really good over here, but over here it's not so hot. So, education... Oh man, let's put ourselves a high school. Actually, can we get away with a large high school? On the edge of the woods. A large elementary school. One over here. And one up here somewhere. I trust that this game will, like it did before, minimize the um, funding to safe levels, reasonable levels. All right, but I think our trash things are at capacity. Now to try to determine that, let's look at garbage. Bring that up. Well, not that one. We went garbage. Capacity, total garbage. So yeah, we're rapidly filling up the garbage here. So I'm thinking, what if we do some uh, expansion on our garbage system, not just with that, but with recycling centers. I think that two recycling centers should be enough However, I also think we're going to need more landfill. So we are going to just add more. Much to the chagrin of anyone who hates landfills. Alright. It's kind of annoying. It won't let you zone anything bigger than or smaller than two by two, but then again, I won't let you zone over any roads, so that's annoying. We are going to create a small park next to the landfill for all you wonderful people. One thing that kind of sucks is when you drive into the city from this direction, you pass dirty industry and landfill on your way in rather than something more pleasant. But oh well, what can you do, right? Okay. So let's see, what do we have over here? Hmm. Could be fun to create a rail loop down here. That goes around. It'd be smarter if we actually zoomed in to a reasonable distance. 
Yes, yeah, so we're going to make a rail that goes around and up to connect to that one. I think that would be something everyone can get behind. Yes, I like the idea of the uh, citizens being able to jump on the rail at any point and take it to any other position in the city. All right. Yeah, we can have that connect. Huh, I didn't think that was possible. I would have to move that road. Let's see, we'll connect that down there as well, and we don't have to move any road anywhere. All right. That is what I indeed do like to see. So, my wonderful ladies and gentlemen, I have, as of the recording of this video anyway, have only uploaded the most, the last two episodes of the uh, four in the session. You know how I do things, I um, record videos in sessions and then upload them. And I will often record new videos before that session is fully uploaded just because it's always good to have videos in the bank for, let's say I feel too lazy to make videos, I still have something to upload. Makes sense, right? But yes, reading some of your comments and some interesting things worth um, worth talking about that people have brought up in um, the chat. The chat. I'm not streaming in the comment section. This is a video. Different. But yeah, um, one thing that was brought up was a debate over whether voting third party was worth it, or whether it was, to use a popular saying, throwing your vote away. Now, I've had experience with this on uh, both accounts, you know, going from a person who actually was, at one point in my younger life, a Green Party member, Yes, I was a legit Green Party member at one point. Um, no longer really in love with their political stance on on everything, so and haven't been a member of that party since uh, since uh, 2006 ish. But not to say I don't still think that many aspects of the party is good, but I just don't follow them 100% like I used to. And I've also been on the, uh, you know, democratic side of things, although my disillusionment with them has also grown since, uh, since those days. However, when I really think about what it means to vote third party, and more importantly, what it means to, quote, waste your vote. Um, a wasted vote, in my opinion, is a vote that you spend on somebody that you really don't want to win. Because, you know, you have the option of voting for any number of candidates, and if you choose one that you don't like, but you think is going to be, you know, less evil than the other one, then that is what is really a wasted vote. Because, especially if somebody is on the ballot that you like better, because if you think, for instance, that Obama and um, Romney in this last election were both really, uh, you know, sucked a lot, but you thought that Romney was slightly better, or that Obama was slightly better, and you picked one of them just because you knew that your, you know, Green Party, Libertarian Constitution Party candidate would not win, then congratulations, you have wasted your vote because you have, um, you know, you have your one vote. You don't have the influence over what anyone else does, and you could choose with that vote to um, put your support behind someone you like, 
or someone you think is going to suck, but not as much as the other likely winner, that is when you have wasted your vote. So, if you have an inclination to vote for Green Party, Libertarian, Constitution, what have you, um, don't let anyone tell you that you are wasting your vote, because you are only wasting your vote if you vote for somebody who you don't like. That is a true waste of a vote. Now that I've covered that, I mean, I think what's, a, what's obvious, at least to me, is that this brings out a very obvious flaw in our uh, two-party system. And I've talked about how, or at least I've talked about how the two parties at this point are not that different, and your vote is, uh, you know, unfortunately not going to change too much as the way things stand. And I talked about how democracy is pretty much dead in America. And of course, you get the standard argument from one guy in the chat, oh, America isn't a democracy, it's a constitutional republic, blah, 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 blah. And, like, that argument is, like, I've always been kind of confused as to exactly what they mean by that argument, because it, to me it sounds like a matter of semantics. It's like, yeah, we are a constitutional republic, not really a democracy. But, you know, we have the institution of democracy, which is people vote on things, and it seems to me to be said by conservatives more often than liberals that to remind us that we are a constitutional republic, and I kind of wonder what they're implying with that, because they're not just saying it to say it. There's something implied, but I don't really understand what it is. So, and I, that's what has always confused me, the implication of people, especially conservatives, wanting to remind us that we are a constitutional republic, not a democracy. It's, yeah, just the implication that confuses me. Because I understand what a democracy is, I understand what a constitutional republic is, I understand what a consti you know, a democratic republic is. It's just confusing, you know, why it's such a big deal for them to point that out. Or maybe it isn't a big deal, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. And somebody asked me to talk about the impending oil apocalypse. Well, unfortunately, my knowledge of that subject is not all that great. Um, because I don't know how much oil is in the ground, or how much oil is currently being found out there, or any of that stuff, but, um, until, as long as oil is a finite resource, that gives us certain problems, not the least of which is, um, a lot of that oil is controlled by, or, you know, in the soil of countries, you know, such as Saudi Arabia and the Middle East, who we fundamentally would not and should not get along with just because, you know, they're, they don't share our values at all and we're endorsing a way of life over there that is very regressive, very um, backwards, and uh, not something that we should be endorsing in any, uh, in any way. But um, we kind of have to, because, to be quite honest, we're just too polite to go over and invade them and take over their oil for ourselves, you know? The Western countries of 100 years ago, or arguably even 50 years ago in many cases, would have not had a problem with doing that. But we've sort of, we've sort of become, what's the word, how can I put this? We have sort of become too gentle for our own good. We're willing to um, sit there and basically let other people who are not as strong as us 
sort of tell us what's what because we don't have the uh, we don't have the resolve to go over there and assert our um, our dominance. So we are ha you know we're just going to be um, continuing to enrich them and you know by not doing anything about it we are endorsing um, a very suppressive very regressive lifestyle over there and I think it's tremendously sad you know I mean you try being a woman in Saudi Arabia you try being a Jew in Saudi Arabia you're not going to have a good time so yeah th those kind of people should not be endorsed um, I believe that you know the world in general belongs to humanity as a group. It's our world, and um, in terms of who uh, who gets to use.